Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Good afternoon and welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint. Uh, We're coming at you on June 25th. It's again in the heart of all kinds of nonsense, uh, uh, COVID, uh, rioting, looting, and otherwise, (laughs) statue toppling, just all kinds of stuff happening. Um, you've heard the news from the left and right echo chambers, and hopefully we can give you a different perspective. So coming at you uh, from my upper left, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Ebert. And on my upper right, you can see Leon, the word, breath light. He's our last word in everything. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Hey, wait a minute now. Um, first of all, you, you, you said his name wrong you said brath white and it's brath weight weight. in this day and age where you don't even want to be a great white shark you got to be careful how you pronounce people's names People are seeing and, what they and want never, to see you, you never know. You never know. I'm a designated minority, and I might get offended. You have to be careful now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you got to be careful. Yes. I wouldn't want to get you on the wrong side of any particular, you know, <laughs> any particular riot here. <laughs> right. Right. And how do you know you're a libertarian? Well, you have a sense of humor. That's how. <laughs> Yes. Yes. We, we aren't the ones tearing everything down at the moment. Exactly. Exactly. No, we are no, 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 no. We are tearing things down. We want to tear, tear down the damn nonsense that's going on out there in terms of the reasoning and the logic behind it. Yes, yes. we want to tear that down. I'm all for that. Yeah. And the yeah, Fed. We want to tear the Fed down, too. We, yes. are, for, we are for philosophical tearing down of nonsense, but not of uh, right. tearing right. down people's property rights. Right. <laughs> there you go. I'm, I'm right. all for that. Yeah. I'm all for that. Thanks for that clarification. Okay. Right. Exactly. Well, uh, and and as I didn't quite finish the intro, and my name's Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. So <laughs> we got through that. I, I I got the last word in there, but uh, so anyways, yeah. uh, speaking of tearing down and nonsense and uh, just all kinds of stuff, uh, we had uh, uh, one of the one of the big things that happened over the last few weeks since we had our last podcast is in Atlanta they had uh, a shooting of a man. Uh, Richard Brooks, and it was a, once again another police shooting, a white officer shooting a black suspect, and this uh, led to a lot more, um, you know, burning down of buildings and uh, unrest and rioting, and uh, it's also led to, you know, potentially some, you know, injustice in the other direction as well, that a police officer has been charged with felony murder when it's... Uh, you know, it's hard to believe when you look at the video, it's something that everybody has seen in about six different angles uh, that, uh, yeah. you know, this was uh, this was a tough situation for the police officer. Um, they were making an arrest of a man who was in a Wendy's drive through asleep. Um, they had talked to him for about 15 minutes. Uh, and uh, after when they decided it was time to that, they had verified that the guy was intoxicated and uh, they were going to arrest him for a DUI. At that point, a struggle ensued. Um, he had uh, knocked down the two police officers in the struggle, took taken one of the tasers, and as he was running, he turned to fire the taser, and at that point, the other uh, officer opened fire on him with a gun and killed him at the scene. And so that kind of sets the stage for you know what's happening on top of all the other uh, chaos of you know police brutality events. And, uh, did you guys have any thoughts on that? This has certainly uh, led to a lot more fuel on the fire nowadays. Well, you know, this situation has now been lumped into the situation of uh, of George Floyd, which is two completely different situations, but it's all lumped in together. You know, white police officer killed black man, so obviously we have a problem. The problem here is, is that the media works with one mantra. If it bleeds, it leads. If it burns, it's earned. If it burns, it earned. And if it's race, it's in your face. And that's what they're trying to do right now. These people will not be satisfied until we have a race war here in the United States. Now, what Je- Derek Chauvin did to George Floyd, there's nothing in any police manual anyway that will justify that. Okay? And I'm not outraged of that because George Floyd was black. 
or because Derek Chavin was white. Okay, I'm outraged because an uh, agent of the state, I'm using the state in a very, very broad sense, the agent of the, an agent of the state took the life of one of our fellow citizens. Now, the man might have been a criminal, he might have been an accused criminal, he might have been whatever. Derek Chavin had absolutely no right to do what he did. Now, in the case of Atlanta, which is completely different, okay, the, that, that um, uh, what Paul Howard, I think, I believe is his name, he's the district attorney of, um, of, Fulton, of Fulton County, Georgia. When he was charging those two police officers, he said, in the two weeks prior, he said that a taser is a deadly weapon. He said this two weeks prior to the incident. So you are telling me now that a police officer, this, this, uh, let me back up here. This guy, he takes the taser, which is a felony, he stole it. He took the taser. While he was running away, he fired it at the police officer, which under Georgia law is a deadly weapon. What yeah, and let, let, uh, let, are you supposed to do? Let me, let me uh, lay the groundwork there for you just a little bit, Leon. Uh, so uh, the DA Brooks had apparently said in the, of the Howard, case. Howard, DA Howard. Howard is the guy's name. Oh, D.A. Howard. Howard. Okay. Yes. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Excuse me. Brooks was the uh, Brooks was, he, was, was the guy victim. who was shot. Yeah. Um, so, uh, excuse me. So, D.A. Howard apparently in this, uh, uh, he had said when he was discussing uh, publicly this uh, uh, the charging of the police officer in this event, uh, yeah. he had said that the, uh, that Brooks, the the suspect, uh, was never a threat. That's the that's the uh, that's the language he used in the discussion. He had said that Brooks had been calm, cordial, and cooperative, and then he said Brooks was never a threat. And that goes to what you're saying, Leon, that he took his taser, yeah. and which he had just talked about being a deadly weapon <laughs> two weeks prior, he tried, exactly. and discharged it at the officer, <laughs> and then said, and then goes on to uh, discuss this case openly with the public as uh, Brooks is never a threat. So that's, that, that's just laying some groundwork there. No, no, no. If, if I may now, he was not a threat up to the point in time where he tried, when the police officer tried to arrest him for drunk driving. Yeah. It's after yeah. that he became belligerent and he resisted arrest. Yeah. Excuse me a second. Uh, now, Tim, did you want to jump yeah. in while? We're, uh... <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, uh, might as well. Uh, yeah, a friend of mine that uh, was an ex police officer. Uh, pointed that out. I mean, the, the taser, if he would have gotten lucky and knocked the p pursuing police officer down, uh, then he could have uh, ran over and taken away his weapon and, and been more of a threat uh, sure. at that point. And so you, you never know. I mean, so the officer, wow, somebody's trying to shoot me with a taser, did, you know, his option of shooting with a gun, defending himself with a gun. So, uh, yeah, um, and it, it's weird how quickly it went sideways. Uh, the, and I'm not criticizing because, heck, you know, I don't know if this would have gone sideways no matter what, but uh, it was going along so well for so long as they were interviewing the, um, the suspect. And then... Um, as soon as the officer decided he had to arrest him, he, he kind of made a sudden move to to grab his arm and put him in restraints. And at that point, that's where all hell bro broke loose. Right. So I'm not I'm not saying that he uh, he should have been slower or or whatever. I have no idea. I mean, they they probably are are trained. Once you, I don't know what. I have no idea. But it all went, that's where it all it just exploded. And it's just unfortunate. I mean, I, you know, I, <laughs> it's like in aviation when there's an accident. Uh, it's, it's never just one thing that went wrong. It's always a right. series of, of uh, mistakes or things overlooked or, you know, it, it's, it's always a, uh, uh, a, a series of events that leads up to the eventual accident exactly. incident. Yes. You know, yeah. and, so, and so I think it's kind of like that in, in this thing here, and, and it really is unfortunate. Um, yeah, and I, I agree with Leon. It, it's it's not the same thing as uh, with George Floyd. So, I mean, just yes, unfortunate, it, really. Yes, yeah, and and you know, you know, the thing is, you know, honestly, whenever a police officer shoots someone in the back, and this guy was shot in the back, every whenever they do that, 
we have to be very careful, okay? Yeah. There was a guy, in, there was a situation in South Carolina where a police officer pulled over um, a guy, I think the guy's name was Walter Scott or something like that. Anyway, I think Walter Scott had some outstanding warrants and that kind of stuff and things like that. But he jumped out of the car and he started to run. The police officer shot him in his back. Now, there are two conditions under which a police officer can shoot someone, okay, end the life of someone. Number one, he, the police officer himself believes that his life is in danger. Or number two, he believes the life of someone else is in danger. So he could shoot under those uh, under those cases. Now, in the Walter Scott case, there was no none of that was true. He was running away. You could you could say maybe the police officer should have chased him down and all that kind of stuff. So the police officer in South Carolina in the Walter Scott case was prosecuted, and I fully support that. But in this case in Atlanta, true, the police officer shot the guy in the, shot um, Brooks in his back. But Brooks had already fired the taser, which Georgia law says is a deadly weapon. He had already fired the taser at the police officer. What was the police officer supposed to do? And, and this wasn't an issue of whether it was a big delay. This was an issue where he had just turned and discharged yes. as he pulled and fired back at him. So, I mean, it's not like you know that the person is necessarily completely fleeing the scene and running away peacefully, I guess. Uh, right. and it, it's something where it's a... It's an ongoing encounter at that point, I would think. So, uh, you know, but but this does bring up at least one one I think principled issue for libertarians, and and maybe that's the issue of when should police ever have the the uh, uh, I guess the justification to to use deadly force on people? And you've already started touching on that, Leon, I guess. But um, you know, I mean, it, it, do we? You know, I mean, a lot of times uh, libertarians are very skeptical of police. And police brutality, but obviously we have police for a reason. If if we're not anarcho capitalists, we, we think there should be some government and therefore some police. So uh, you know, yeah. yes, you know what what does what context justify um, you know using force against people? I guess for police. Yeah, I think the two that Leon pointed out are the two only ones that I can think of. Yeah. Um, you know, because we're talking about ending somebody's life. Um, you know, somebody fleeing the scene on foot, especially when you know who they are and where they live, just that alone. In other words, if, if this guy would have dropped, <clears throat> dropped the taser and just took off running, then you would, you would be able to say, okay, you know, if, if you had the presence of mind, and I'm not saying I would have, but uh, if you had the presence of mind to, to say, let's, uh, we know where he lives, let's just wait this out and, and we'll, we'll try to follow him. And, and uh, you know, the, the guy was pretty tuckered out by then too. You know, he probably wouldn't have gone too far. Plus he was just sleeping because he was drunk, so drunk that, you know, <clears throat> I don't know. I'm just saying, had he chosen that path, the the suspect sorry i keep forgetting his name but um richard, it, it richard brooks was the suspect okay okay so yeah if, if he would have just uh, taken off and then you know not done anything uh um offensive in nature like pointing things at other people then uh it, it would have probably turned out you know we, we probably never would have heard of this it probably so and went Probably and Wendy's so. wouldn't have been burned to the ground as exactly, result. yeah, not, which not, is another thing. Yeah, that, I mean, I mean, and that's and that's the, the, the next piece of nonsense of this. Nobody wants to look at the facts of the case. All right, nobody wants to look at the facts of the case. Everybody just wants to look and say, well, oh, here's a white police officer shooting a black guy. Come on. Yeah. I mean, if 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 you want to look at the, the Derek Chauvin situation, fine. There, there's plenty there to be outraged about. But how do you look at the facts of this case and say this is equivalent to the Derek, the, 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 the Derek Chavez situation where he killed uh, George Floyd? There's no comparison between the two. And yet they turn around and burn down the Wendy's where people work. People are not out of work because, mm -hmm. because of this ridiculousness. They yeah, have innocent people out of work. Yes, people have nothing to yeah. do with it. Right, what exactly. is really, it really, oh, sorry. Uh, go ahead, Tim. What? What happened? Uh, what's the re the current situation with the police officers that were involved? One, oh, well, one have been well. They both, I think, have been fired already, and and both are um, uh, under indictment. Yeah, one under of them for felony okay. murder. So one I mean, for felony uh, murder. Yes, yeah. one for felony murder. Really? 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, and I, I'm not sure exactly to the seriousness of the charge of the, the other officer, but it is substantial. It's not like yeah. a slap on the yeah. wrist. Yeah. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> but uh, the, you know, this does get into an issue I wanted to talk about, about defunding the police. But, but you know, one, one thing before getting to that I wanted to just bring up is that, you know, this gets to the uh, principle, I think, for libertarians that, you know, every law should be really well thought out because in the end, sure. no matter what the law is, if, if you're going to have a law, you're going to have police enforcing that law. And so that right. means just using any force could wind up resulting in somebody dying. I mean, that's just, it's that simple. I mean, it's, uh, yeah. you know, we saw a case uh, with the protesters in, I can't remember which state, but an old man got in the way of the police. He, he uh, you know, was a protester yeah. and the police just went to push him out of the way. It didn't look like they were trying to hurt him or anything, but right. they pushed him. He fell over and he hit his head on the ground. And I mean, any right. time yeah. Yeah. we have the government employ force, there's a chance somebody could get seriously hurt. And so, you know, in or this dead. case, or dead. yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and I mean, in this case, the guy was sleeping in a drive through now, you know, this is an issue of private property rights. I mean, you know, if somebody goes to sleep and, you know, just shows up on your porch and goes to sleep, you know, I think you have the right to call somebody to, to say, Hey, you know, this, somebody's asleep on my porch. I yeah. need him to go. But, right. but the, 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 but the, you know, it's just worth noting, you know, if we start having a lot of ridiculous laws, like, Hey, you can't sell a cigarette by itself, you know, uh, like the loose cigarettes <laughs> that Eric Garner got killed in the chokehold right. over you know, right. in New York. And, uh, you know, or, you know, Hey, you can't put that you know, you can't use this or you can't do that, whatever the preference of the day is, you know, something oh, you're yeah. you like to enforce that preference, even for something as stupid as maybe a plastic bag law or something else, you know, you may wind up setting up a situation where somebody has to use force on somebody else. And, you know, people could get hurt and maybe killed over it. So just something to think about. <laughs> yeah, and, and on, on the flip side too, the, the, uh, anarchy of uh, the the community there that has uh, s somehow come up in Seattle Chaz or whatever it's called you know there there you're getting shootings all the time now and and right. there's you know the police can't come in there so uh, y y you know <laughs> you got two bad situations and I think the the whole thing about the police uh, you know, when you say defund the police, of course, they don't really mean not have any police, but uh, you could say, well, if they were defunded, then they would have to fund themselves. And that means private police. So then now, you know, if, if anything's a libertarian talking point, it would be privatizing the police. And so you can have that discussion, but to just say defund the police or not have the police around, you know, gives you an anarchy that you don't want either. You know, so so that's not a, a solution. And sure. so when people talk about defunding the police, they need to have, uh, you know, well, what what is the solution? What's it look like? You know, not not just it's always this thing about going away from something, you know, well, what are you going toward? Because because you got to be going towards something and have an idea that's workable. And, uh, you know, so. For yeah, I mean, in the end. If we're going to have, I mean, uh, you know, libertarians for the most part are all about private property rights and it, private property essentially means you have the right to say, this is my property and I'm going to use it the way I want to. And if you can't exclude yeah. somebody from your property, I mean, if somebody can just come and take something from you, then, you know, you don't have any private property rights at that point. So, right. you know, that implies yeah. that you've got to have some kind of police of some sort, you know, uh, or else, you know, I mean, you know, complete anarchy, which is just rule of the biggest guy with the biggest club. Um, yeah. You know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because to go back with your example, guy sl sleeping, falls asleep, uh, parks the car in your, in, right in your driveway. You can't get out in the morning. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, can oh. okay. You have the right to be able to get out of your property and go to work. And th this guy's yeah. blocking yeah. it. Okay. So without police, that means you've got to arm yourself. You know, at least I do, because I'm, you know, old enough that, you know, most people could kick my ass. So, uh, oops, sorry. Is this, uh, is that a bad word? <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> yes. Yes. So, so, uh, All the kids so are gone. I, yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> by now. 
That's for sure. So uh, it, wasn't, it had nothing to do with the topic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's where we're. <laughs> so uh, alternatively, it's it's a heck of a lot easier and better in all respects for me to be able to pick up the phone and call the police and have them come out and them deal with the guy. Right. And so, yeah. um, you know, we want that. Okay. So how do we get a, to get to that situation where we can have police, but we, we can also try to avoid a lot of this stuff. And I think there's, okay. I hope I'm not going too far off the reservation, but I think there's three big, juicy, really good tasting, low hanging fruit on this issue. And that is qualified immunity, the, the biggest and juiciest qualified immunity and ending that. Number two is police unions and doing something to reduce their, their powers that they have and influence. And uh, what, was the number, what was number three? Uh, oh, the drug war, ending the war on drugs because the war on drugs yeah. is over and the drugs have won. And we need to admit that this is just the stupidest idea other than people that are either Baptists or bootleggers, of course, are the two that love these kinds of laws that make substances that people want to ingest or put into their body in one way or another illegal as if we do not have dominion over our own body. So there's, there's three things that I think um, should be up front uh, and discussed. And, um, and I know they are being discussed. And even the Supreme Court recently decided to avoid that whole qualified know, immunity yeah. thing, in spite of yeah. the fact that they created it. They're mostly responsible for its creation. So yeah. qualified immunity, um, the, uh, the police Union. issue with the police unions, and yeah. then um, war on drugs. But you know this, this this issue this issue about the unions is really is really a big is really a big one, and 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 people are not to me I mean I I hear some buzz about it but I'm not seeing this thing being seriously discussed. Now you tell me why a man like Darren like 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 Derek uh, Chavin, who by the way had about 18 complaints against him, only one reprimand. He was still carrying a badge with the full authority to end people's life. On the day he killed George Floyd, why was that mm. happening? The reason why that yeah. was happening is because the police unions, just like other public employee unions, protect the worst of the worst. Mm. And you know there are four groups of people in in the United States that that sort of uh, become untouchable: is the fire, the police, the teachers, and and the civil servants. Well, Jason and I know about that. We were civil servants for we have been for a long time. I was for thirty years. Okay, so we part of the problem too, I guess. But but the, but, but the, the fact of the matter is, un, until you're gonna make us lose the rest of our audience, like, <laughs> we're just drunk. pissing everybody off. Yeah. <laughs> but unless and until we do something about the public employee unions, yeah. we're gonna have we're gonna have some serious problems. We'll continue to have problems with those four groups I just I just named. Because they always end up protecting the worst of the worst. Well, you know, they, they, this brings up an issue, though, and that's that, you know, for, for libertarians, most of us kind of have a, an inkling of, you know, markets being superior in incentives, you know, usually the solutions to, to getting at the best solutions than, than government solutions, these centrally planned solutions. And this is the problem with almost every government solution is the incentives are all kind of messed up, you know? I mean, you don't have, you know, market forces, market signals. I mean, the, the beauty of a market solution is the double thank you, you know, that, that, you know, you interact with somebody because they want to interact with you. And supposedly, yeah. at least at the time of the transaction, you're both happier. But in the case of government uh, entities, a lot of times that's that's not necessarily the case. You know, you're you're forced to use it. You know, you don't have a choice. Right. And so the incentive can be very, very skewed and messed up. But, you know, there's some time when we have to have government in some areas and that's probably a debate we don't have time for in this show right now. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially now with 24 minutes on the clock. <laughs> on the clock, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it, I mean, I mean, before before we run out of time here, 
I, I think these these public employee unions are, are a real problem, and and I mean there are so many examples of this. They take the rubber room in in New York City for teachers. The situation with police, with with, 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 with all sorts of these public employees, public servants like all, like we like I was and Jason is. I mean, there's these people protect the worst. There are all kinds of things. Watching porn, doing all kinds of stuff, and these people don't get fired. They never get fired. Whoa, okay. speaking of that, that's uh, time for our knucklehead noise patrol. So I think Leon, our mics are muted. <laughs> Leon, looks like you had the last word on uh, on the, uh, uh, the the rest of the show. But as far as our uh, crazy quote, we uh, with our knucklehead noise patrol, we try and find something outrageous somebody has said uh, recently. And so uh, recently in Oakland, uh, the there was an incident where some something that appeared to be nooses were hanging in a tree to somebody and it, it turned out after a complaint that with the uh with the nooses uh after after there'd been a complaint and somebody thought this was some kind of a racial you know uh a statement somebody was trying to make it turned out it had been just an african-american man who had installed some exercise equipment up in a tree <laughs> and and so these were some ropes that had some handles on them and and it was something that I guess some people enjoyed using, but somebody had complained, uh, you know, I guess kind of seeing anything that could potentially be a noose as something, uh, you know, that had some racial background. And so wow. the uh, mayor, the the point of the, uh, or, or the, the crazy quote was that the mayor of Oakland had said that uh, with respect to hate crime, intentions do not matter because the harm is real and that it's uh, the, the symbolism of the ropes uh, uh, having uh, in the tree, uh, the malicious and the maliciousness of the intent. Uh, the intent isn't real, rather, but it was it was uh, the perceived harm uh, of somebody I, else. Okay. Yeah, but Leon, did you have any thoughts on that before the show well, ends? I mean, I mean, this this gets back to the ridiculousness of all of these things. Okay, all of these hate, so-called hate crimes, and well, you know, I have a real problem with the concept of a of a hate crime anyway. You know, up until recently, I had two two um well I, I I've taken out one. I had two nooses in my in, in my garage. So I guess if the mayor of Oakland had come down here and she had saw these two nooses in my garage, which I used earlier, uh, I used to use the noose to pull down to close my garage, she would have come here and say, I am probably guilty of a hate crime and probably have me prosecuted for because of her damn nonsense and, and her, her damn feelings. But the point about it, everything now is being looked and examined through the lens of race. And it all gets back. If it's if it's race, they're gonna put it in your face, and nobody will be satisfied until there's a race war in this country. That's what's going on here, and we gotta do something about this before it actually does happen. And with that, we'll give you the last word, Leon. And